go through this lesson, bless us. We want to thank you that we have come to see light the morning sun. Thank you, my Lord, for blessing us every single day. Guide us, lead us as we go on to our lessons. Give us wisdom of discernment as we praise your name, as we praise and worship no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Luz Mikulu. I'm 16 years old, and today I'm going to be delivering my message which is the, just, the justification of faith. So starting off, I'll start with 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. It says, Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. Now, I speak about faith because I believe that it is one of the things that, it is one of the topics that we most struggle with, especially us teenagers, since we're going to, through adolescence, our brain is still growing and we are at a stage where we question everything. So I'll explain why your faith is justified. First off, what is faith? It's trust. It's having confidence in someone or something. But in most importantly, it's belief. Without belief, you, you, you cannot have faith in something you don't believe. For example, say that you are a cop and my family has just been, God forbid, kidnapped and you are trying to assure me that you're going to do everything in your power to bring them back home safe. But I don't believe you. See, how am I supposed to have faith in you if I don't believe you in the first place? These two components have a relationship. Without faith, it is impossible to be with the living God since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. The word faith appears more than 300 times in any Bible. It is the major thing the Lord requires from us. It is the one thing that improves our relationship with God. Faith is believing and receiving what the Lord has revealed, what he revealed through the word, through us or anywhere else. It's personal trust. It is the seed towards growing a tree. Let me elaborate further. In Mark 5, Mark chapter 5, it talks about a woman who is severely sick. Now, this woman has been bleeding for 12 years and she spent all her life savings. She's seen many doctors and tried everything she could to help herself, but nothing worked. In the process, she continued to get worse. Now, she had all this commotion going on in town and, I, and she probably knew Jesus arrived. Now, I'm sure she heard all the stories of how Jesus healed, how he healed a crippled man, made a blind person see, and just about the same period, he casted demons out of a man named Legion. And she thought, if Jesus can do it all for these people, then I'm sure he can do the same for me. What I admired was that she could have been discouraged and complained. Why? Why is my life like this? Why me out of everybody else? But she didn't. Instead, she made her way to Jesus because she knew healing would be in her way. She believed it. Now, the problem was that in town, everybody was surrounding him and it seemed nearly impossible to get to him. But because of the state of her mind, she was determined, like on a mission. So she pushed her way through the crowd, through her weakness. I mean, she had been bleeding for 12 years, but she paid no mind to it. She knew that if she made it to him, she would be healed. Now, one of the many reasons she kept going was because she contained the right thoughts in her mind. Now, she had come from behind him and she touched his robe. Immediately, unexpectedly, she was healed. Now Jesus looked around the crowd asking, who touched me? And um, because he felt the, the power of healing drive out of him, his disciples looked at him. We are surrounded by many people. Everyone is touching you. No, no, no. Who touched me? He locked eyes with the woman and she fell to her knees confessing everything. She was afraid she had done something wrong. But Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be free from your affliction. See, her faith was the key that saved her. It was great her parents might have been praying, her friends, her neighbors might have been cheering her on, encouraging her, but there was nothing more powerful than her faith. You see, we are all taught from a very young age that faith can help us overcome our, the most difficult times. See, nowadays we are all getting distracted. 
whether uh, it's your phone, your family, your friends, and even at times we're getting doubtful whether Jesus is working or has he abandoned us. These are all the components that have been planted as a, dis a distraction to diminish your faith in God. But you have to keep it strong, just like the woman did in Mark 5. The crowd surrounding Jesus represents everything that makes us doubt him. Maybe it's those broken dreams, the, the, the struggles or your, the disease you got diagnosed with. Maybe it's even your academics. I mean, <laughs> the youth will relate. Mathematics is not working sometimes. And you may pray to the Lord for that 50%, that 60%, but you keep failing. And it makes us question if the Lord is working, you know. And it makes us doubtful. And when we are doubtful, our faith hangs in the balance. But in times like that, we have to be like the woman in Mark 5. We have to push through the crowd, push through the struggles, through, push through that pain. See, notice how Jesus heals. He would put his hand on the person. But in this case, the woman was the one that put her hands on him. Maybe that's the answer. Put your hands on Jesus. Don't let him come to you. Run after him. You will make it just like she did and achieve what you most desire. She desired to be healed. And, by, and through her faith, she was. Because in faith, next comes salvation. And the devil does not want you to be saved. We have the evidence of this. Because in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and we will be saved. The devil refused to let that happen. One of the many problems with our generation today is that people think that if they have God, they won't expect to have any troubles. But I saw a quote that contradicts that. It said, sometimes the devil will allow people to live without trouble because he doesn't want them turning to God. Just something to think about. See, think of your faith as a seed. The more you water your seed and feed it with prayer, scripture, fasting, repentance, the more your seed will continue to grow, but it blossoms in the process and transforms into something magnificent. Isn't, what, isn't that what the Lord is trying to do for all of us? But the devil will try to sabotage the growth of that seed by giving you everyday problems like cutting off your water supply or planting doubts in your head that the seed is not going to turn how you expect it to be or that you're wasting this time watering the seed. See, maintaining faith is not easy. We're literally believing in something we cannot see, touch, or perceive. Something invisible yet so powerful. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, it says that we walk by faith, not by sight. When we don't, notice that there are alternatives. When we don't see, we don't believe. When we don't believe, we don't see. It's vice versa. But we are not walking by what we see. We are walking by what we believe. Although most people will say, although most people will say, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. The statement is false because once you see it, you won't have to believe it. But you have to believe even when you can't see. If I go back to the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, it talks about how Bartimaeus, um, the blind beggar, called out to Jesus. He cried, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many people were trying to quiet him down. Shush, shush, shush. But he cried even more. Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus heard him and he said, call him. So the people, the people said to him, get up, have courage. Immediately, Bartimaeus threw his coat and he walked to Jesus. He was a blind man. He couldn't see where he was going. But because of his faith, he did not let that stop him. Jesus asked him, what do you want? Bartimaeus said he wanted to see. Jesus said, go, your faith has saved you. Bartimaeus was a blind man because, and he, he, he walked by faith, not by sight. And because of that, he could see again. After everything that Jesus has done for you, even for the people in the Old Testament, you can't tell me that your faith is not justified. If a crowd of people can't stop a woman from running to Jesus in pain, if blindness cannot stop Bartimaeus from getting to Jesus, then what's stopping you? Is it what other people say that makes you uncertain? That, that would be like walking on a stage, having the most angelic voice in the world, and you wow the audience. 
But then there's just those three, four judges that tell you, mm, no, you can't sing. Mm, no, your voice sucks. Please stop singing before you make my ears bleed. Now, because of what, what they said, is it going to change your belief that you can't see? Or are you going to take their critics and just walk off the stage and pursue your dream of being a singer? It's the same thing with faith, really. Therefore, faith is the most important, the most imperative, the most necessary trait we need. Jesus withdrew himself to be in solitary places alone with God. We must do the same. Keep in contact with him, and it must be deliberate. The first thing that a man or woman does consistently day after day tells us a lot about their greatest priority in life. Make God your priority, even going through the worst time. In Isaiah 41, chapter 10, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. See, God will only do such with you through faith. He's not asking you to figure this out. He's asking you to trust that he has. Jesus said to his disciples, you have been with me through my trial. And that's faith. See, the message is, don't allow the devil to tamper with your seed. Instead, grow it. Believe in it. A seed is to flower and a flower is to tree. And a tree can survive through eternity, just like we will in the afterlife. Put your faith in God and if you have time, ask the Holy Spirit to water your seed. Because in faith and trust, he shall set you free. So if we can all stand so that I may pray for you. Dear God, firstly I want to start by, thank you, that by thanking you for the gift of life. I thank you for serving your duty as my father. I ask that you please guide us. Many of us are trying to take our first step in the staircase, but it may be full of darkness. So I ask that you be our light. Help strengthen our undying love for you and to water our seeds. Be with us through our good and bad moments, to learn from them, to tighten our grip on faith, no matter what the devil or the world tries to throw at us. I believe in your greatness. I will follow you just as a sheep follows their shepherd. We thank you for all that you have done and may we abide in your laws through our daily lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank everybody for um, coming today and for watching. As you know, we have a Sunday daily service that starts at 20 past 11. We have classes downstairs. And um, at Faith, uh, Global Faith Min Mission Ministries, we end at 2 p.m. max. And thank you for tuning in and have a blessed day.